Welcome to my little DIY vlogmas. I am so sad that I haven't been able to do any vlogmas episodes this year, but I am planning for next year. It's just been really crazy for finals time and everything. So I just want to do a little bit of something. I have been doing little projects, that's why this is not playing anymore. So let me tell you a little bit about this. This is a stocking that I got from the Dollar Tree. It did not have anything up here, it's just plain. Uh, we got a new member to our family, Sadie, my little pup, and I thought she needed a stocking because I like spoiling my dogs. This came with these iron-on letters and little designs. There's also a candy cane and a few other things that you could add to it. I did feel like this was a little too plain. I wanted a little something extra because my stocking was pre-made and it has jingle bells on it, which you can hear, little snowflakes or whatever, and I just added my name to this. This is really old. <laughs> this is like 10 years old. Um, and then last year, I made a stocking for my husband. He's a Florida Gators fan, or we are Florida Gators fans. Um, let's not talk about the season they had this year. But I made this for him last year when we were living in California. And the colors are blue and orange, of course. So I just did the same thing that I'm going to show you today with this Florida F. And I did paint around the edges of it, fabric paint, to make it sealed and just pop more. The things you're going to need for this tutorial are scissors, iron-on adhesive paper, and I recommend cutting it just to uh, about the shape of your felt. Uh, you don't have to go perfectly because we could do that after we iron it on. Of course, you're going to need your felt in your shape desired. I googled an image of a bone and just drew it on the felt with marker. I felt that the red and green would pop really well and I'll probably go back in with uh, white to outline it. Lastly you're gonna need your iron. I have it on the synthetic setting. It might need to be a little bit hotter than that but we'll see. First step, this is really simple. You're just gonna find the side that has the glue on it. You can feel the texture, you can see it. The other side is just paper and that's what you're gonna be peeling off. So take the glue side up, put it on your surface Think about which way you want the bone. You could see my original tracings on there, so of course that's going down onto the iron adhesive. And you're just going to go right over it. Once you have it stuck to the paper a little bit, you can flip it to the other side and do the same thing. The trick to this is you don't want to iron it too much because you will take off both sides of the iron on. I think that's pretty good. Your next step is to cut out the iron-on. It's just gonna make it really easy to peel. Next thing is you're just gonna peel off this back paper and it's gonna expose an iron-on side that you'll be able to iron to your project. It's a little shiny and that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Next step, you're going to position your felt onto your project wherever you like it in however orientation you want it to end up. I think I'm just going to do mine straight like so. Now that I have in the perfect location that I want it, I'm just going to take my iron again and go over that. Once you see that it's stuck on nice and tight, you can kind of see if you need to touch up any places. This corner definitely needs to be touched up. Everything else looks good though. Okay, I'm just doing one more check to make sure everything is stuck down. It looks really good, better than I thought. Uh, the felt looks like it sunk into the stocking, so that looks really nice. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit and be back to put my fabric paint around the edges. Okay, I've given my project a chance to cool down. I've also taken off my big chunky sweater so I don't have sleeves that might get caught into paint when I'm putting it on. While this was cooling, I decided to swatch some of the fabric paints that I have. I have red, gold, black, and white. Today I've decided to use the Scribbles Iridescent Gold. What I'm gonna do is work equally from the left to the right so I don't get my hands stuck in any of the fabric paint. So let's get started. 
I recommend having toothpicks and a napkin handy in case you make any mistakes. I don't like how this gold is turning out, so I'm going to try and take it off and do white. See? It's all good. Don't fret. Okay. Take two. Let's try to do it with the white paint. try to use for this is constantly squeezing and doing slight back and forward motion. You're going to want to lay this flat for 24 hours in order for it to dry. You can then go back and fill in any extra spots you might see up here after settling or make a little bit of a wider line. I hope you guys like this. Tell me if you have any craft projects that you use iron-on or fabric paint for. I'd love to see them. And that is that. I have a few places that I'm not too happy about, but I'm perfectionist. So I'm trying to stay happy with the handmade quirks of the stocking. I do like how it turned out overall. I think it's pretty and it's a lot better than store bought because, you know, handmade items are special. They mean more. And even though it's for a dog, I will be proud to have this hanging in my living room for years to come. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning the basics of iron on adhesives and fabric paint to add a little touch of handmade to your holiday stockings. I hope you were able to follow along, and if you did this project, please leave a comment below so I can see your pictures and see how they turned out. Be sure to stay tuned for my next tutorial on a place to hang those adorable stockings, a handmade stocking holder.